Hello everybody and welcome back. Today we're talking about something that's a little strange to talk about publicly, but I feel like this has just been sort of a new thing for me. I've done a lot of research on it and I wanted to share with you everything that I've learned about natural deodorants. So I have two main brands that I've been trying and one is Schmidt's Natural Deodorant and I have the scent Bergamot and Lime. Sorry, the window's making it a little glary. And then I also have Native Deodorant. I wanna sort of run through with you the pros and cons of both of these deodorants. Spoiler alert, I really do like both of them, but I sort of wanted to give you my input and in how they performed on me so that maybe it could help you choose between the two if you've been wondering which natural deodorant you wanted to switch to if that's something that's been on your mind. So before I dive into telling you all about these different products, I sort of wanted to talk to you about switching to natural deodorants in general. One of the deodorants, Schmitz, has this great blog associated with their website and they sort of walk you through the process of switching from chemically deodorants and what might happen to your body when you switch to a natural deodorant. Will it still be effective? How will your sweating be? And so the, I have these written down here. And so the switching symptoms are, you'll experience increased sweat. Now the reason why is because traditional deodorants that you get off the shelves of the drugstore contain aluminum. And aluminum is the thing that sort of goes into your pores and prevents you from sweating. And that's how these deodorants can be marketed as antiperspirants. Well, as you could probably imagine, if you've ever sat down and thought about it, it's probably not the best thing ever to prevent your body from sweating. Your body was made and designed to sweat out toxins and to sweat out, I don't know, excess fluids like that is just, that's how your body works. So it's probably best that we're not sticking a chemical on our skin that's gonna clog those pores and prevent them to sweat. So when you switch over to a natural deodorant, a lot of them are going to contain baking soda. And this is sort of the property that's going to absorb the sweat rather than totally clog your pores and prevent you from sweating. So that is one symptom that you'll realize is you are gonna be sweatier under your arms, but because these natural deodorants contain the baking soda, you do have agents acting to prevent it from being a total downpour under there. You know, there are still ingredients in there that do have antiperspirant-like qualities without the total antiperspirant feel. So that is a downside, I guess, if you are really worried about sweaty armpits, but the marginal difference between the two is worth it. Like, I think that it's worth it to sweat a little more with the natural deodorant and know you're not putting harmful chemicals on your body every single day and letting your body go through its natural processes. Secondly is odor. So the odor, I promise, do not be alarmed. All of these deodorants smell really good. The problem comes when you first start switching. So you're only gonna notice these symptoms at first. And the reason why is that once your body finally gets totally unclogged in the underarms from all that aluminum, and it starts really beginning to flush out the sweat, your glands are sort of over working now because they have the ability to do it, right? So like they're finally able to exercise their muscles and you're gonna naturally produce more sweat under your arms. So more sweat is going to lead to increased, uh, you know, smells underneath your arm. There's gonna be an increased level of like odor producing bacteria that's also involved with the increased sweat and increased situation that's going on here when you finally make the switch. Now again, this is not gonna last forever. This is something that is going to subside after a while and after your body is like, oh, they're not gonna clog me up again. Like I think I can just relax and sweat at my normal pace. And then you should be all good. The third switching symptom is actually sensitivity. So the sensitivity and odor sort of go hand in hand. So when your body is finally releasing all of the sweat and all of the excess chemicals and bacteria that have been built up under your arms when you were constantly putting aluminum based products on it, it's gonna sort of lead to an increased scent because your body has to flush all of that out. Well, when it flushes out, it's gonna interact with the sweat and the bacteria that's being released and sort of the hot and moistness under your arms. And it could lead to increased sensitivity because of that bacteria release that's also causing the odors. Again, this is not gonna last forever. Do not think these are permanent symptoms. These are just temporary symptoms until your body gets used to the switch to natural deodorants. Now they make the disclaimer that not everybody will feel these symptoms, but they wanna make you aware in case you think that it's the product causing these and not just your natural body reaction to changing to natural deodorants. So this one I actually ran across when I was having a lot of issues with deodorants. I've been having a lot of sensitivity, rashes, itchiness, all sorts of things, and it all happened when I switched from one secret deodorant to another deodorant. 
But I've also had issues in the past where like Dove deodorant just does not work on me. And Degree deodorant does not work on me. I don't know, it's been a hard deodorant search for me because I've even tried the clinical strength because I'm a super sweaty person. And so I was like, let's try that. Well, that made my underarm so dry. It was terrible to get off in the shower. I hated it. So I bought that one time and never went back to that. I also hate the application of gel deodorants because I, I feel like I have to sit like this forever because they're not drying in time. I just decided that one day I wanted to switch to a natural deodorant, but I didn't know anything about it. And so I didn't really know where to begin. I was watching YouTube one day and I was watching one of my favorite people ever, Jam Beauty 89 and she mentioned this Schmitz deodorant in one of her favorites videos. And she mentioned that she had tried out a couple that just didn't do it for her. She really wanted to make the switch to natural deodorants, but nothing was on the market that really performed like a normal deodorant until she met this one. So this one she picked up at Target for $4.99. And so I ran out to Target and picked it up in the same scent that she recommended, which is the bergamot and lime. And it actually smells very fresh and very much like bergamot. I don't know if you're an Earl Grey tea fan, but it smells a little bit like that. So if you like that scent, then I don't know, you probably like the scent of this deodorant. It also comes in a lavender vanilla at Target. Now that Target price was definitely on sale because I went to the website today and this retails for $8.99 on the Schmitz website. In contrast, this native deodorant retails for $11.99 if you buy it in the single version. So both of these deodorants have a subscription option. The difference between the two is that this is $8.99 regardless. If you want to buy a single stick, it's $8.99 on their website. If you want to subscribe, it's $8.99 every time it's shipped to you. Your shipping options for this one are every two, three or four months with three being the most recommended time to ship. They say that these sticks can last three to four, three to five months, but I think that's, that's a really long time. I would probably get this shipped every three months if I were to do the subscription. This deodorant retails for $11.99, but in the subscription service, you can actually get this for $9.99. So if you go ahead and commit to renewing to this, then you're obviously getting a little bit of a deal. So there is an incentive to subscribe with the native deodorant. So how to pick which one you'll want now that you know that they have subscription services and they're not outrageously expensive because if you're somebody who's loyal to clinical strength deodorant, then these prices are not gonna shock you. These were a little shocking to me because I usually get like a twin pack of secret deodorant in the shower fresh scent that I've been wearing for years for like $8.99 for two. So it is definitely a pricier, product, but it's also one that's a lot better for you, so I'm willing to pay it. All right, so the differences between the two, let's start with texture. This one right here is very, if I rub on this, and you can see, it, it looks like your normal stick of deodorant, but this is actually a very rough texture. I would almost describe it as gritty. And on the instructions on the tube, it says, hold product momentarily to skin to soften on contact with body heat. Gently apply a small amount to underarms. Follow the instructions. Hold this under your arm for a second, even if it feels really weird, and this will soften up the product and make it so much easier to apply because if you go straight in for it, it is like so gritty and will feel like it's scratching your underarm. So don't do that. Follow the instructions. Also put just a little bit. I learned that with traditional deodorants, I was obviously using way too much, but I don't think it really mattered because as long as the aluminum got under my skin, it was, being like it was being absorbed and it was blocking the sweat well with this if you put too much it sort of creates a barrier to where you're just sort of like rubbing the product against each other and it's not really soaking into your skin so think with the two swipes it just allows a thin even layer to soak into your skin so it can actually get the job done so I would say the same for this, use sparingly for both of them. I, I think that like two swipes under each arm is like plenty to get the job done. But this one on the other hand feels much more like your traditional deodorant. Again, it looks pretty normal, but this is made primarily with shea butter that's gonna give you that soft application. Whereas this is not made with shea butter, I'm pretty sure. It says that arrowroot powder is the number one ingredient. So that makes sense that a powder would be a little bit more grittier a little bit grittier, not more grittier, than shea butter. The scents, I can't really compare the two. I have the coconut and vanilla in this scent, which is what they said on their website was their most popular. I wouldn't usually go for this type of scent under my arms, but I actually have enjoyed it very much, but I think I wanna try something different next time. Not gonna lie. I think I want like the lavender one or the rose one or something a little bit more floral and fresh versus this like coconutty scent. I don't know, this smells like a dessert and this smells like 
fresh and clean. I'm ready to go for the day. Something else that I learned about the differences between these two products has nothing to do with deodorant in general, but it has to do more with their website layout. The Schmidt's website is so much easier to navigate. You know how to go in and create your subscription and pick your frequency. It's super easy. The native one, not so much. Like, I thought that the first time that I visited the native website, and I could be wrong about this, that the subscription section was very clear, but now it's sort of buried deep and you have to go in and look. So this one, and I think I forgot to mention this earlier in the subscription portion of this, I talked more about the price, but this only comes to you every four to six months. So the Schmidt's deodorant comes to you a lot more often if you want it to. So if that's a kicker for which product you wanna try, it could be something to think about. Something else that's pretty unique to Schmitz is that they offer the same scents and the same formula in a jar format. And I thought this was really weird and I had to read the frequently asked questions to sort of figure out how it worked. But with the jar, you get a little spatula that comes with it and I guess you just scoop it out and it says you apply it a little bit to your fingers, swarm it up, and then I guess you just spread it under your arms. But no thank you, I do not want that layout of my deodorant. Just give me the stick. I'm not trying to like play under there. Another cool thing that they have is that if you are partial to the jar application and maybe you think it works better, leave it in the comments below. I want to know. I don't know if I'll try it, but I do want to know your thoughts if you've tried it. They have a recycling program with the jar format. So if you get your deodorant in a jar and you use up five of them and then you mail them back to the company, they'll sanitize and reuse your deodorant jar and send it back to you. And you actually get that one for free. So it's incentive for you to save your jar, send it back to them and recycle and help I don't know, they're just like doing good things in the world. So after going through the websites and doing my research and seeing that Schmitz is really expanding their product offerings, not only have they increased the number of scents that they have available, but they've also created a very extensive sensitive skin line. They even have a whole um, deodorant stick that's actually a cooling sensitive skin line. So maybe you're somebody that's irritated, they've input these cooling properties, which I think is really cool because I think that itchiness and irritation is I know what I've experienced the most when I have irritations in that area. And so I bet that the cooling effect is very helpful for that. So they're also saying that they're committed to expanding their line of natural products to all bath products. So I think that there's a lot to come from Schmitz. They have a really awesome blog associated with their website. And I don't know, I'm more attracted to their scents that they have on their website. That's not to say that Native does not have good scents because they have a wonderful scent product offering. They come out with a lot of seasonal scents, so that's really fun. You can get the variety packs and, you know, let your summer last all year long. And I do think that overall, this one has worked better for me. This is the one that I reach for more, but I'm more attracted to this on the website and I really wanna try some of these scents. So I think that the reason I've been reaching for this more is because I do try to sit, shave under my arms rather frequently. And so I'm always reaching for this after I do that. And this has not had any sort of irritation problems or anything underneath. I don't know what happened to the clip where I explained to you what happened to me when I used Schmidt's deodorant right after I shaved under my arms, but I had this incredible burning sensation and I actually ended up having to remove the product. So that's why I tend to reach for the native deodorant more, especially when I'm really treating the underarm area in the summertime months. I don't know, I think I will probably repurchase the native for sure, but I wanna continue to use this and like, maybe now that I've gone through the whole process of my body like flushing out all the toxins, maybe this will be better right after I shave my arms now. Even though the website doesn't really recommend you doing that, I'm just curious as to why I can do it with this one, but not with this one. And it could be something with that gritty texture that this has that this doesn't. As far as sweatiness goes, I think that this one leaves me feeling a little bit less sweaty than the native does, but I think that this holds the scent longer. Yeah, I feel like on the whole, I feel a little bit less sweaty with the Schmitz, but Native does a pretty good job. Like they're pretty much on equal planes for me, except for the texture and the irritation after I shave under my arms. So this is the one that I sort of have to default to for a majority of the times. So hopefully this video has been a little bit helpful and I've helped you learn a little bit more about switching to natural deodorants and two really great options that you have available to you. Again, if you just wanna try something out really quick, go run and pick this up in stores. Try something out. Both of their scents are amazing, so if they don't have this bergamot and lime one, don't worry. The lavender vanilla one smells great too. If you want to take the plunge and order a native deodorant, I have a link in the description box below that will get you a free trial size deodorant with your first purchase. So, I don't know, a little two for one. And I'll also have a link for the Schmitz deodorant down below in the description box as well. So, 
I've been through price, I've been through subscription differences, I've been through texture differences, I've told you how they perform when I sweat. So now the choice is yours. Let me know if you've tried either of these and which one your favorite is, and please let me know your thoughts on the scents. I've been very interested in knowing what the other native deodorant scents smell like since I don't have access to these in stores. So please, please, please let me know which one is your favorite and which ones I should try out next. So if you've learned anything from this video or you just enjoyed watching something that was sort of out of the ordinary, then please like this video and subscribe if you haven't already to stick around for more content from this or that. And I'll see you in my next one. Bye.